is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Welcome to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and we have a a program today with a little bit of a twist. A lot of times people don't think about this side of it. They think about words. You think about writing. You think about getting your book done. You think, oh, yeah, there's this thing called marketing, and maybe I'll do some publicity. Well, there's also another thing that is really critical, really elementary, actually, and there isn't a lot of thought going into it, and actually... Most authors don't think about it until their book is just ready to go to print. And that's called a photo. But your photo and the photos you use will be used in so many variables and so many different places for so many different things that you really need to think of them early on. So that's what today's show on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, is all about. I'm Judith Bryles. With me is an amazing photographer. Um, just came out with her first book, so we'll talk a little bit about life before the lottery. And Ashley Bratton, um, heads up, her company is called Ashography. So she does both event and portrait photography. And you can find that at ASHO. G-R-A-P-H-Y dot com is both an expert in creating awesome events but portraits and what she does with portraits I, I have to tell you most people don't look that good so it, and you're not talking about uh, I mean I've seen some um, photographers literally white face out their subjects and make up them and put them back on and you see these glamour shots well what we're talking about here is literally taking the natural person but Ashley's got this eye that she can bring out the most amazing um, color the most amazing light and place it in scenarios that are just where you should be so that's where we're going to be it's all about photography both for your books for your websites for other areas that you could use them for. So we're ready to go. I'm Judith Bryles. It's Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and hopefully we won't have any more techno issues. So, Ashley, you with me? I'm here. Thanks, oh, Judith. Fabulous. All right, so you know what? Let's give you kudos. You've got a brand-new book out. You've had three book signings. How did they go? Oh, I am still on an author high right now. Um, <laughs> this, is, this has been a whirlwind adventure. So as a debut author, I have to say this has been a great experience. I, I cannot complain in any way. Well, I have to tell everyone, if they had seen what you had put out, I mean, she put these beautiful, uh, made, created these beautiful, catchy postcards that she sent out inviting people to her various um, uh, events and she's grabbed some wonderful front page publicity with local papers and and you know we you never undersell the value of the local throwaways sometimes you, <laughs> you pay for them but those local throwaways people look at them and they it's, come in it's true yeah yeah so well that's great that's great well we'll come back and let's talk about your book let's jump into uh, photography so <laughs> what should authors be thinking about well first and foremost i think you're you're absolutely right when you say that most people kind of put this off as a back burner because most people, they don't, a lot of authors don't like being the center of attention of that nature. And what does a photo session do? It puts you at the center of attention with the lens exactly. in your face. And yeah, that makes exactly. a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, so the first thing that a lot of uh, people, mistakes that people do is that they, they don't book a professional session. And that's mistake number one. Um, but once you do actually get the courage and actually do book a photo session, um, one thing to remember is that you 
this is the best way to represent yourself, and your readers want to connect with you, um, and they want to connect with multiple sides of you. You're not just, you know, one, one-sided. You're like a diamond. You're an author diamond. You have many facets, and you need to showcase that in several professional photos. So how soon do you think, um, would you recommend that they start getting, getting pictures? You know, I, I, I mean, no, I referred someone to you who said his haircut was at the perfect length. And you got him in in 48 hours. I thought that was pretty hot. But I thought you know, we did good on that one, too. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. But, you know, one of the things, Ashley, is especially for women, let's talk about our women authors, that we often change our looks. So what happens here? Well, that is true. Um, I, As far as for what you need for your actual bio shot for your book, um, the time not to do it is when you're in layout and you're panicking and allow yourself a little bit of time. Do it at a time when you're comfortable. Um, I'd say at least maybe, I don't know, a month to a couple months out uh, to give yourself plenty of time. And at your shoot, don't be afraid. If you're one that changes your hairstyle, if you're one that, that changes often, don't be afraid to bring multiple outfits and to bring – and to, and to change up your look so it doesn't look like it's done all with, you know all in one shoot. It's okay to make it look like it was done over a period of seasons. You can have some summer stuff on and some winter stuff on, too. Um, it's your shoot. You can do what you want. But, and then the other thing is, I guess the telltale sign would be on these areas is that um, that if you have seasonal changes in your outdoor, if you have outdoor shooting, that will be telltale. So yeah. it's not a good idea to have your summer outfit on if there's snow going on. Although it might be intriguing. It might be yeah, intriguing. Yeah. Uh, it, you could make it fun, that's for sure. But um, the, the, more than anything, uh, as far as your bio shot goes for your what you would use, probably use for the actual book would be something that's fairly neutral as far as um, seasons go. So you're talking neutral backgrounds. You're talking, you know, depending on if you do an indoor shoot or an outdoor shoot. Um, it's fairly, that's the whole point of a bio shot is it's fairly neutral. It's just you as the best possible you that you can be during that that time. It's, um, it's a time to represent yourself. And typically it's a headshot of some sort. Um, we all know the kind, the upper body shot, shoulders, face. And this doesn't have to be the mug shot that, you know, that gives us haunts us from memories from school school days past, but it definitely does need to be something that's professional and that showcases yourself. All right, so what would you make suggestions? I, I know I, I've had with um, authors that I've talked to, especially my guys, I said, please don't put a business suit on. Please, please don't <laughs> do that. You know, it is not the high school picture, but it's very common for them to want to um, put, I mean, there are some cases where a business suit is appropriate. I get that. But I, I'd like to find something a little bit more personal about them. Um, if they're, if they're uh, uh, devotee uh, pilot on every spare moment, I think I'd like to see him up in his plane or something. I mean, I, I, I think of things a little bit different. I want to know a little bit about their personality. Right, and there's a way to do that and still do that in a professional manner. Um, for example, I believe one of your uh, authors, she was in the military, and she had her shoot that was actually on a tarmac. And so she had kind of planes in the background, and the photographer, you know, blurred them out. But you can still see that it was a military base. She had her bomber jacket on. It, it She looked great. Like, it was something that was a professional, professional shoot, but it also showcased her background in a, a nice manner. And so you can do stuff like that. And if your book is a – um, uh, if you're a car guy and your book's about cars, then, you know, shine up a car and, and get some fun shots that way, too. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways that you can bring in that personality um, and that genre that you have of yourself and still and still look professional. There's a way to do it. Well, I know that one of the fun shoots we had at the Judith Browse Unplugged event, and we're, gonna, we're just <laughs> going to hit our break here just in a sec, but one of the fun plugs is we just randomly all went outside and we got, we surrounded this 40 Ford coupe that one of our authors wrote a book about, the, the bootlegger 40 Ford, and that some of those pictures are so much fun. He loves them so much that he uses them everywhere now. Aww. No, oh, he loved those shoots. All right, we're going to be right back. This is Author You. It's Judith Briles, and um, your guide to book publishing with me is Ashley Bratton today, and we're talking about photos, how to create them, so it really makes you look like a rock star. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. This is your guide.
Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with? If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, Multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival. Festival Award and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. We're talking about photography, how to use it, when to use it, what types to use, indoor, outdoor, etc., for your website, for your blogs, for any articles, for your book jackets, just anywhere you can imagine, even, even a crowdfunding program. So with me is Ashley Bratton. She is the visionary and principal in Ashography Event and Portrait Photography in um, in Colorado, and the website is ashoashography.com. 
And, you know, it, it, Ashley has quite a pedigree. I mean, her clients include uh, the, the liquid people like Heineken and Takati, but also Tiger Woods Foundation. She's done school boards, Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and she has done some wonderful things for Author You, and she has shot photos also for my own event, Judith Browse Unplugged. So let's kind of go through, Ashley, kind of the drill down that authors really need to think about. And, you know, you've already alluded to some of them, but you know, what type exactly of, of picks do they need? I think a lot of it depends on what type of genre or how you want to present yourself. So there's definitely a difference between inside and outside photography, um, and you could be the type that you may need a little bit of both um, because both have a very different look and feel to them. Uh, I personally enjoy a lot of outdoor photography and taking people it makes into an outdoor setting of some nature. Um, it, it, it brings an element and a zing to a lot of pictures, but then there's also times when a more neutral and a studio-type setting um, is more important. Uh, for example, like if you're a horror author, maybe you want something that is just a plain, either a plain black background or a plain white background and a neat black and white image of you. Uh, that can that can really kind of set a tone um, that you're looking for for that type of genre. Whereas maybe a chiclet uh, person uh, or a woman, she may want to have more of an outdoor setting and have a more natural, you know, natural light, maybe some trees or you know, neutral setting in the background. And you can also bring in elements. We talked earlier about this. Um, elements of play that give your photos more personality. So, again, you know, if you're in the military, you can bring in elements and have your shoot on a tarmac or um, uh, like the one client did, how, you know, he brought in his his old snazzy car, and, and he, I think he ended up uh, getting a bunch of photos for his social media sites and, you know, group shots, and it, it was just really fun. Um, so photos really, you know, a picture says a thousand words. So basically it's what do you want to say and how do you want to represent yourself in your book? But, but the is thing your, is your that, to do it. Yeah, that you should have them. And I think that when I looked over your Kickstarter, and I would encourage everyone to look at Ashley Bratton's uh, Kickstarter campaign so you can see a really unique and effective presentation of how she did her campaign, and and the, the fastest way is just to go to Kickstarter and use their search box and put in Ashley's name, A-S-H-L-E-E, -E, and then B-R-A-T-T-O-N, and just look that over. So in her campaign, she has got a wonderful picture, a fun, playful picture of herself, you know, really <laughs> portraying how successful she's going to be in the thing. And she's got other images throughout it. And you probably use more images, I think, than anybody, Ashley, that, I, that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, well, the, as an author, words are my world. But as a photographer, photographs and pictures are my life. Um, so for that, I actually, and throughout this whole process, um, I had to practice what I preached. So um, pic pictures are the way that people can connect with you instantly. Uh, not everyone has time to read all the words and, and everything, but they can connect with you instantly in a picture. Um, so that was a key element in the Kickstarter program was to, for me to showcase what I wanted to do, what I had been doing, and then where you know where we were, we were, excuse me, where we were taking that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, for my particular book, you know, I was talking about uh, bucket lists and goal setting. And so for those pictures, I, I think one of them, I think the one you're specifically referring to is, uh, it was when we had gone ballooning. And so there's a picture of it, this huge, big balloon, hot air balloon in the background. It was number 30 on my 30 by 30 list. That was the 30th thing that was on there. So, um, that was a really a really fun moment. We had made T-shirts and, and that kind of stuff. And I actually talk about that in my book. So to have a picture that represents that um, was was great. Uh, and also even throughout my book, um, that was one thing that we had talked about is is how to incorporate pictures throughout the book, um, which is what we what we did. So um, it's a picture. Again, I can't say enough about pictures. But then again, I'm a little biased. <laughs> and, and that's okay. All right. So. With with the the deal is I, I guess the people always wonder okay am I going to lose my shirt am I going to lose my shirt how much is this going to cost and can, is there is there such thing as a regular package or is are you totally on your own and 
And what about reprints or, um, you know, who, you know, how, how, where can you use these photos that get taken? Sure. It can be, it can be intimidating. I get that. Um, just like anything, that there's a lot of different type of photographers and a lot of different type of photography out there. I mean, there's everything from, you know, nature and architecture and model and high fashion and wedding and events and sports and boudoir. Um, so really what you're looking for is you're looking for a photographer that knows how to do people and specifically some type of portrait shot. Um, so that you definitely want to find a photographer that is in that kind of category. Um, and also, as far as packages go, every photographer, you know, does does different things in their packages. But one thing, as you're as you're searching for one, is um, look at their style, look at how you know how they edit, look at how they pose. Uh, and also, I would definitely in their actual packages read your contract because where a lot of things can happen is in where when you need the digital files and when you need commercial copyright. So when you book your portrait session and when you book your photography package, make sure that included in the package and the price that you pay, you're, you're getting those, that copyright and those digital images. Because, um, I mean, you can, go, you can go on Groupon and go find a photographer and pay 30 bucks to go get a portrait session, but you're not going to own your photos. So what good does that do you? Uh, yeah, so ideally you want unlimited usage, right? Yes, yes, because especially for your bio shots, you're, those are what's going to be in your book, and you're you know, getting several hundred to several thousand printed. And what the last thing you want is for some photographer to ha to be able to come back on you for those photos, and you, that you don't want that. So you need to have in writing that you have the copyright and commercial copyright for um, for your photos. And and ultimately, they are your photos, but um, but you need some paperwork to back that up. So get it in writing and then keep mm -hmm. it. Somewhere. Yeah, they're yours. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. And then if you on on um is there any question about resolution? Because there's there's always that issue that with web usage it's much lower resolution. And sure. how do you how do you maintain that? I mean I've had higher resolution photos that get used over and over again and, and they, I guess I guess they get bastardized or whatever and all of a sudden they're the low stuff. And I don't know how to find the higher stuff anymore. I mean, is is it is this a common dilemma, or I, I'm just a goofball? <laughs> no, it can happen. Typically, typically, um, a photographer is going to be taking photos in what's called raw files, and the only time anyone ever gets raw files is if you're actually shooting in them. So that's that's kind of a behind the scenes. And then when a photographer will take their raw files that they shot in, and they have software on their computer to where they will, as they edit, uh, eventually they convert into JPEGs. And that's what, you know, the rest of us uh, know how to work with are JPEGs. Uh, so basically when you get your files from your photographer, um, whatever format that may be, it's going to be in JPEGs or probably PNG, you'll want those high-resolution photos. So then when you're working with your layout guy or your web person, they'll take the photos and they can size them down into what is needed for your website or for emails or that kind of thing. So um, you're going to need different file sizes for probably the same photo. So I guess ideally is that when you get them in, you need to make sure that they are clearly identified what's what so they don't get mixed up. Yeah, like when you're sending your files, you can even put 300 DPI or high res in your file name. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times um, for specific photos, you can, as you resave them and convert them into lower resolution for your web stuff, you can even put web in the title of the file name. And that will help you, you know, you personally to be able to know which one you're using and for what. Mm -hmm. All right, and that would that would take care of it. All right, we're going to come up to another break here. So when we come back, I'd like you to do a couple of things. I'd like to let's jump into since we've been talking money. Um, we I, I guess you didn't really say what to expect to pay. We heard, we heard Groupon for thirty dollars or something. I mean, you heard something like that, or was that Fiverr? I can't remember what you said. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't yeah, don't do that. All right, so what kind of range when we come back? And then I'd like you to get into how do you pick a photographer. Okay. And then let's get into what to expect in a shoot, and we'll get into videos and all that kind of thing. All right, we're going to be right back. Ashley Bratton's my guest. You're listening to Author You, your guide to book publishing, and I'm Judith Bryles. Yes. 
is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask coming up you'll hear more about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith bryles all right with me is ashley bratton we're talking photography and as we took the um the uh lead out i said let's talk about what it costs, really costs, and also how do you go about picking a photographer? So, Ashley, which one do you want to tackle first? All right. Well, I guess let's talk about money. Money, money, money. Uh, as far as just like anything, you know, when you're when you're working with your book and you're budgeting out different things, you're, you've already spent money on layout. You've already spent money on editing. You've already spent money on cover design. Um, so the thing where a lot of people try and, and cheap out is with their photos, and they don't realize the importance of of what their photos do, not only for their book, but also for the multiple, multiple projects and the marketing promo materials that you're going to need, you know, further on, further on out. So, mm-hmm. but just like anything, prices can vary from a, you know, even a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars, depending on what, you know, who you go with and what your package types are. And I don't want to scare people with that, but um, it is. It, it, photography is an investment, and so um, it's basically you just want to make sure that you know what you're getting. And I think we talked about that a little bit earlier, where you need to make sure that you're getting digital files, that you're getting the copyright, uh, that you're getting commercial use copyright out of whatever package. Um, so as you're shopping around, make sure that that is included in your packages. So are they? Is that something that's typically in a, a contract? the commercial usage and that kind of thing, or is that something you really have to go after? Uh, it's something a lot of times that you need to make sure that you have uh, in writing from your photographer. So a lot of times, like if you're booking just a portrait photographer, um, 
make sure upfront that you are upfront about what the use is with your photos because what you don't want is on the back end for them to say, oh, well, I didn't know that you were going to be using them for commercial use and here's the extra fee. Um, so that's what you want to avoid. So as you're shopping around, as you're making your phone calls or meet, you know, meet and greets, uh, definitely, you know, just make sure that you are upfront with what the use of your photos are. And actually, what's funny is um, that's how I developed my photography packages for authors is that this was a common problem that uh, all these authors at your conference were having. And so I, you know, here's the, here's the plug. Uh, basically, I because of this need, I developed specific packages just for authors. So I, I not only in my business have wedding packages and family portrait packages, I actually have specific packages for authors that address this particular, you know, um, use so, and you know my my personal packages start at two hundred and fifty dollars with an author you discount um, if you're an author you member, but um, but again if people have different budgets and you need to shop around for what works for you. Mm-hmm. You know what this this probably would be a great time just kind of to interject. Sometimes I do it when I come out of the break at the, at the bottom of the hour, but that uh, Ashley is actually part of the grand prize. <laughs> in the in the uh the the uh book competition the draft dream book competition that is now up and live on the authoru.org website and you can get all the details there the uh, entry forms are all there and the early bird is on and four amazing winners. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Your age is not an issue. If you're under 18, you have to have a parent or guardian give the okay that you can submit for it. But that the entry forms are now open. If you're an authoru.org member, paid up member, the entry fee is only $99. It's 119 for people who are not. What can you win besides getting an author package? Um, that Ashley's talking about, you'll get a full book cover and a design. You're going to get printing. You're going to get global distribution. You're going to get entry into the top. Your entry fee is waived in the top national book award contest. There is so much, and it, each one package, the four winners are going to get almost $10,000 in goodies, um, and there will be 20 runner-ups, and they will get packages that are just under $1,000 in value, but it's hot. So if you've got a book that has not been published, it cannot be published out there. If you've, if you've had sightings thrown on your blog, it's okay. But otherwise, it has not been published. You want to enter the Draft a Dream book competition. All the details are at authoru.org, and Ashley is one of the grand prize winners. So you go get her. All right, Ashley, <laughs> I just had to mention that. So. I was so excited when you approached me to be a part of that. I just think the Draft a Dream uh, competition is such a neat thing for for new authors and people that have no idea what they're doing. I mean, it's just such a nice little bow and such a nice, amazing package uh, that I don't think people really realize the true value of what this thing is. Well, you know, it's not it's not only – the um the the new authors it's this is for old timers so uh the, the the side of the rule that everyone needs to realize if you're already a published and if you've already published you can enter this you just can't enter it in the genre so the four genres the four categories i should say are young adult children's fiction and nonfiction. so i'm a nonfiction author now i can't enter anyway because i'm involved with author you but <laughs> that um is a lot of nonfiction people have lots of fiction ideas or that there's easily, you know, maybe maybe you write dealing with conflict and you've got an idea that, you know, there's a, there's a kid's book that I could use involving around conflict. There's some stories in here that I could tweak and morph and do it and I, I could make a picture book or I could make a, you know, a, maybe a chapter book. You can enter those areas, but you can't enter nonfiction if you're already published in that arena. So, Read the rules, get involved, because it will be hot. Do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, so we, we've got that. Um, and so variety, but getting a full-blown, really, I mean, you're talking doing indoor. Uh, it could be indoor or outdoor, correct? Yeah, well, I mean, those are the two types of shoots that you can have, and you need to decide which one is right for, for you and for your genre and for what you need. 
Um, but as far as as far as let's talk about what to expect at a shoot. Like when you actually book your shoot and you found that perfect photographer and you've got the package, you know, you know what's in your package and you're going to do this. Um, the day has come and now it's time for your shoot. What do you do? Um, and that is actually, here we are. And that's, uh, that's really fun to talk about because most people, they don't, this is not something that you do on an everyday basis. And so a lot of people get really nervous about it. So it's, it's fun to, uh, it's actually really fun to to meet people and meet authors especially and and draw them out uh and to get good photos so and and so that's what you want to do all right yeah. and you know i it, it's always good to what to expect so i think it's um i think it's really important for people to um know what maybe not what to expect but maybe not what to do or uh try to set up i know uh, Joan Stewart, the publicity hound who has been on the show several times, we're doing a special event with her on how to create awesome, off-the-wall, unbelievable publicity on a shoestring budget. I mean, I'm going to be at that event in mm-hmm. November. And that she has one of her favorite shoots is with her pooch, which fits mm-hmm. her brand as a publicity hound. Oh, that's perfect. So um, branding, now, are, there, are there some things, is it better to go solo, Ashley, or should you use props? Um, it, again, that also depends on what, uh, what type of photos that you want. So I think for that, I think that's perfect. And then also, um, as far as what to expect at a shoot, if you're doing an outdoor shoot, probably most photographers are going to advise you not to wear all solid white, like no solid white tops, that kind of thing, because that um, may not come off as as crisp and clear and as what you think in your in your photos, or it could blow out, and that's also not what you want either. So, choosing your wardrobe is is important when you're going to shoot. So, the first thing I would recommend is, uh, or that I recommend to my clients, is to bring multiple outfits. Um, so, and bring outfits that you feel good in. Uh, the whole point of this photo shoot is to bring out the best possible you. And so you want to bring things that make you feel good. Um, I was actually just at a, I just did a shoot for, um, uh, a little senior and it was her senior portraits. And it was so fun because she had all these different outfits and then she brought out the one little dress that she just loved and her whole demeanor changed as we were shooting. I mean, it just brought out the best smiles and just the best. It was just really fun to to watch this one outfit. By changing one outfit, it brought out amazing photos for her. So so wear something that you that you are comfortable in and that and that you enjoy. Okay, um, so you mentioned the word blown out or blow out when you're talking about white? Yes. What's that mean? And that happens a lot uh, with outdoor photos. Uh, uh-huh. Obviously, a lot of times the lighting can be unpredictable. Uh-huh. And so, and that's up to your photographers to be able to determine what's best. And they may, you know, they may put you in the shade. They may, that kind of thing. But it would really help your photographer out if you're not in, like, a solid white shirt. And that just has to go do with, um, you know, with some, some back-end stuff on, on the editing side. Mm-hmm. Are so. there certain colors? I mean, we know certain colors look better on and people, we all have colors. If you put me in olive green, it's going to go, oh, my God, she needs to go to the ER. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they're fabulous on people with more olive skin. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. So, Again, so, you need to you wear things that make you feel and look amazing. Um, but also to keep in mind is hopefully by this point you kind of know a little bit what your uh, book cover is going to look like or at least what colors. So kind of make sure that you keep in the back of your mind what your book cover is going to look like so you you can either color coordinate or not clash, basically. So if you have a red cover, you probably don't want to wear pink <laughs> in your in your photo shoot. So keep probably that in the back not. of your mind, too. Mm-hmm. Or, or orange or orange. Or, or yeah, exactly. So keep, think of yeah, some of those colors. colors might not work. All right. Well, we're going to take our final break, and when Ashley comes back, here's I want her to talk about some things that can be done with book promotion, and especially as you go out to start marketing and come into play. And if time permits, I would love, love Ashley, if you could uh, come in and tap in on a little bit of video side of some sure. things to do and not to do. Okay, so here we come back with this is Judith Bryles. You're listening to Author You, your guide to book publishing. With me is Ashley Branton of Ishography, and we're talking photos. This 
is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com welcome back to your guide to book publishing Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Ashley Bratt, and we're talking about author portraits. And one of the things, you know, she did mention the author package she puts together, and I'll just tell you quickly what it includes. It's a, it's a one-hour photo shoot. Now, she's based in Colorado, so it's um, come visit us. That would be a good idea. Multiple wardrobe changes, professional editing. She does all the editing. Um, you get full copyright release. She'll get anywhere from 15 to 25 digital images, and then you'll be able to tap into the online album on ashography.com for viewing and sharing and selection and all that. So that's really, I have to tell you, that's a good deal for two fifty. All right, Ashley, let's talk about promotions because it's just, I mentioned postcards earlier, but what about other stuff Wait, from your social media, email, et cetera? Sure. Part of the point of booking your shoot is you want to get a variety of, of photographs, not only that standard bio shot of some nature, but also things that you can use um, in your promo materials, uh, like you said, you, you talked about postcards, uh, social media, so Facebook photos, your Twitter photos. Uh, it, this, this, these are the type of photos that would bring in your dog or, you know, flowers. Or if you're a chef and you're doing a recipe book, like this is where these are pictures of you in your kitchen and your apron and, you know, the pots and plant, pans flying around and that kind of thing. So, so those are the type of photos that show a little more you and a little – that you can use um, it, even in your newsletters or uh, a different part of your book, like maybe a, a fun fun picture of you on your book flap. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. Your email blast should always 
uh, in your newsletter should always have a photo of you as, as you're doing it. Because, again, people want to connect with you. They want to know who you are. And so a way to do that is to give them nice photos of yourself. Well, you know, I have to tell you, I don't have on my email blast. I don't have a photo. I've got a, I've got a personal photo on, on all the social media, but I actually have since I've written 31 books. I actually have kind of an array of book covers um, that go across. I have the very first one to the very latest one, and then cherry picked a few, so you see kind of like a postage stamp going across after all my contact information on that. I mean, that's what I chose to do. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, Actually, I was thinking about that the other day. I got an email from you, and I noticed that you have a, a wide array. I don't know, it's like maybe ten books or something like that in uh-huh. in that image. And something that you could do is take that image and maybe tweak it to where you put three photos of yourself, like in in intertwined in that in that realm of books. Um, so that was something that you can do, or put one fun. photo of you. Yeah, one photo of you in the middle, or like a book it or every couple books, you know, put a put a photo of you. Um, in a in different there. way. Well, we have to schedule a photo shoot. We'll do that. I know, and we uh, can get a photo of you and all your books together. We can just bombard you with books. <laughs> and we can pile them up, and it'll be, <laughs> it'll be three Where, feet tall. It's like Where's Waldo? If Where's Judith? <laughs> all right. So um, really, be. Um, it's, it's, but you're surely saying it's important to be really creative and don't do a standard head-on shot. You need to do some action type of shots. Right. You'll um, need both. But mm-hmm. also, but things that you can use as you're creating uh, yeah. your material, your promo material, mm-hmm. not just for print stuff, but also what you're using online. So your book trailer is going to have pictures of you in in your book. Uh, if Anything that you do, uh, I know that you're a big promo or uh, promoter of Canva and all the different things that you can do on Canva. Mm-hmm. Um, Canva is a, gr- is a great uh, website where you can make those Facebook cover photos and put, for, for me when I was promoting my book, I, put, I would take a photo and then I would put like when the book launch date was and I would use that as my, as my cover photo or uh, creating tweets and posts and, and that kind of thing. You can take photos of yourself and also incorporate other photos and, and do like a collage and that, you know, people really enjoy that. So you can, uh, it, the thing is that you're really saying get your personality out. Mm-hmm. Let the personality come out because it makes a huge difference. Remember you're an author diamond. You have lots of different facets and so you want to showcase the different sides of you. And the whole point, think of diamonds. The difference between a diamond and a lump of coal is pressure. And if you're an author and you've written a book, you've gone through a lot of pressure and especially publishing it. So you you have gone through the ringer at this point. It's time to showcase yourself and actually uh, and show the best possible you. Which makes it very fun. <laughs> Um, you know, you can have a lot of fun with that. All right, so if you look at, I I mentioned that we wanted to try to kiss on videos a little bit. So, I mean, you know, you've you've got uh, Animoto, which is, is, it can be used from anywhere, and that's quick and fast and extraordinarily inexpensive. Um, That's one thing. You've got iMovie uh, for a lot of people to use. What what do you suggest? What, what, What can we do here? There's a lot. Well, there's several different home tools that you can use. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Animoto and iMovie. A lot of people uh, are able to to do that fairly quickly. The one thing I love about Animoto is one. I think it's thirty dollars for the year that you it's, get. It's, oh, it's unbelievable. It, I, I just think it's kiss off. It's like kiss off uh, money. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's and I I love Animoto because it's something you can create anything from a 15 to even I think up to three minute video of different things and that was actually a key component when I was doing my Kickstarter campaign um, is one thing is the video and I think uh, for Kickstarter (laughs) the percentage of people that actually receive all their funding and actually get fully funded um, that have videos is astronomical compared to those that don't use videos. Mm-hmm. So uh, if that's something that you're thinking of doing is, is doing a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding campaign for to raise funds for your book or for a project, um, Animoto is a great way and a great investment to be able to do that and to tell your story. And they've got all kinds of different features and pre-programmed uh, programs, I guess, in order to be able to, that you can pick your style and pick your music and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I highly recommend using something like that. You can even use that for your book trailer. 
Which is absolutely, and you can change it around and you can play with it. I mean, I've done workshops in my office with small groups of authors, and over a three-hour a three hour period, you know, explaining how to do it, put it together, they leave with a finished product, which I love. I right. love. you got to love those tech toolboxes, huh? Yeah, tech toolboxes are very cool. So you have a, you have a thing where people ask you, is, is any video better than no video? And your response is often what? <laughs> Done is better than good. <laughs> All right. Actually, so, that means not get necessarily. Something, get something but you in the do can. Need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> get something. Get something. But um, you can actually do, like I said, you can do a really a decent video through through Inamoto or something like that. And if you're a whiz and you like tech stuff, then you know do do stuff on i or iMovie and or whatever program that you have on your computer. But the point is is to do something. People are visual. We like seeing visual things. We want to see action, and uh, video is a way to do that. And your book can be represented um, in a neat way by using any of those tools. Which is, which is what you need to do, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> are you waving a finger? <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, you uh, that you have to get involved in this. And yeah. look at that, that people who know me well. That if you talked to me three years ago, and I had when you know we were talking about doing a redesign on a couple of our websites, and and I I would say there's no freaking way I'm going to be doing this social media stuff and all that. My gosh, I am all over it now, um, and and use it aggressively. And it, number one, that things change, and things like social media or the town hall of how your marketing goes about. And part of that marketing issue is having the right images mm-hmm. and a lot of images as you you pull that together. And I think you know, it's, we we did talk about resolution and thing. And one of the things I think Ashley, it's really important for authors to get is that that um, a lot of times people will send me stuff, you know, I'll say I need a photo to use here and do these things, and they'll send me a, a photo or they'll send me a JPEG, and it's so teeny um, it can't really be opened up because what they don't get is, is that as you, as you make it and enlarge it, you have all these holes all over it, and they don't understand that from all the, when it gets pixelated. Does that make sense? <laughs> to me, yes. The, and that's one thing when you book your photography package or when you get your 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 session, whatever package it is, you want those digital files and you want the high res digital files. It's so much easier to get those high resolution files first, and then you you know you have your folder um, with them, and then whatever photos you need to use, you can you can compress them down into the, to what you want to use them. But it's much better to go from bigger to smaller than smaller to bigger. That's where you run into problems and you see those nasty pixelated photos. And we yeah. all have seen them. But all right. You so, don't want to be the one that does it. Okay. So in our in – our, we got less than two minutes here. So what <laughs> works for us in your promo? And I know you say everything. So in a quick, you know, kind of bullet point, what should we have? For for works for, yeah, yeah like like you know you I know that you have like uh, you've got three key photos I think three or four key oh, photos you well, use oh, for all okay. your publicity well, for yeah. Me. Yeah, I um so I had my photo shoot and I as a photographer I actually went out and I booked a, a professional photography session um and I did the full hair and makeup and all that kind of thing and um, got the digital files and but I had to practice what I preached uh, for me so for me I took. Um, I took basically three files or three photos from that session. Um, one of them, and I used them in everything that I did. So one of them was a, the standard headshot. It was of me in a chair. Um, I wore a leather jacket and ripped jeans because that's just who I am. Um, it looks like me. And then I had one picture that was a close, um, a close up with a brick wall background, a neutral brick wall background. Mm-hmm. And then the third photo I had was a little more playful. It was an up close, um, almost like a shot of half my face and had uh, you know hoop earrings and, and a winter hat and it's just very playful so those it, were the it, three photos that okay. I put on my website and that's critical all right so it, believe it or not we're out of time so oh, here, no. if you want to see what Ashley's photos look like I'm going to tell you go to go to her personal website Ashley Branton dot com a s h l e e b r a t t o n dot com and you can see what she's talking about with the photo run, you'll be able to see her one sheeter, um, and you'll see oh, yeah, the press media coverage. kit. Yeah, she has a full blown media kit. Take a look at that; it's professionally done, and it's a great model. When you see something you like, 
copy it, but do make sure you use your own photos and all your own content. I'm Judith Bryles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. Thank you, Ashley, for being with us. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each 